Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you New England's entertainment legend, the godfather of Boston comedy himself, Mr. Dick Doherty. Get it out of the way for the people that have never seen me. You're probably thinking, whoa, this guy's too pretty to be funny. <laughs> well, the truth is, I'm not as pretty as it appears. I think a lot of it's the distance and the fact that I keep myself so trim. <laughs> no, that wasn't comedy. From now on, when I'm doing comedy, I'll go like that. Okay, what does this mean? Comedy. What do you do when somebody's doing comedy? Yeah. You laugh. Yeah. But not about my weight. I'm very sensitive about my weight. My grandson said, Grandpa, you should lose 60 pounds. So I took the little shit up to Maine and lost him. <laughs> well, my son-in-law and my daughter are Irish, so they'll make another. <laughs> and if they don't, you know how it is when you lose weight quick, it comes right back. <laughs> it's, uh, see, I know, I walk on stage, people see the ponytail. <clears throat> They go, he's a biker. No, I'm not a biker. Yes, I ride a Harley. Doesn't make you a biker. I ride in the rain. Doesn't make you a biker. I ride in the winter. Doesn't make you a biker. It makes you an asshole. <laughs> Damn easy to spot, too. The guys I ride with are all businessmen. One's a lieutenant with the Boston police. Another's a coke dealer from Dorchester. <laughs> All well, people who work together should ride together. <laughs> we get together and do men's stuff. Men's stuff, like burp and fart. <laughs> well, women don't fart. They hold it until they're 35 and then they blow up. <laughs> until they get married. <laughs> I'm not a biker. I like to dress up like a biker. Wear the black leather jacket, the black eagle on the chest. And I wear the outfit not so much because I ride a Harley, but because there are young girls that when they see that outfit, they say to themselves, this is a sick, degenerate, low-life, belly-crawling, reptile piece of scum. I want him. I know what I like. I don't want him with the pastel sweater with the little alligator, with the powder on their arse from Wesley. I like them with teased hair, chewing gum, mini skirts, go-go boots, tassels. Those girls can't even spell no. More important, they have no need to know. I'm not a biker. Here's one you're not gonna believe. This is gonna come as a shock. I used to abuse drugs. I know what you're saying. How can a guy that looks like that abuse drugs? Well, I did. I let my cocaine get wet. <laughs> Once I knocked over a ball of Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> Kept all my pills in one bag. All the little downs, right with the speed, banging against the quaaludes. It was hell. <laughs> Picture a quaalude on the phone calling an 800 number. Help! He's abusing us. That, of course, is my world-famous quaalude impersonation. <laughs> Do another one. That, of course, was a vicious circle. I happen to be a recovering alcoholic and an addict, 17 years clean from alcohol and drugs. Hey, 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 I wasn't going to move into your neighborhood. I wasn't going to date anybody in the family. Calm down. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't give up drinking and drugging because I hadn't left my apartment in four years. I did not give up drinking and drugging because Spanish people were banging on my window going, we want our money, Mom. I gave up drugs because Betty Ford said, say no. She's got a way to move you. What she did to his golf game. And I'm going to be honest with you we can keep it amongst ourselves. When I was drinking and drugging, I... I did a lot of perverted, sick, kinky, degenerate things. 
with large groups of young women. Well, actually, it was young groups of large women. I was pretty shit-faced. <laughs> Nobody ever said, hey, there goes Fussy Dick Darty. <laughs> A lot of times you'd see me in a bar at closing time. Hey, you come here often? You'd hear her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey! We get that bell off your neck, you're coming with me. Take you out to Ting's Bar and tip you. Quarter VO every day. Did an eight ball of cocaine every day. Had no major effect on me. I'm 27, I feel great. What? My hands down. What you think I was like, 23, 24? Drank a lot. I remember my first drink, I was going to a CYO dance. That's Catholic Youth Organization. Any Catholics here? Look at what participators they are. Yay! You don't have to raise your hand, just look guilty, I'll spot you. I can make the Catholics feel comfortable. In quest vigeste patio sande queste, there will be a second collection. First drink, I was going to a CYO dance. I can tell you, I get to the dance, my friend Murder Murray says to me, Dick, Becky Howard wants you to take her out in the car. I said, I can't, I'd be embarrassed. He says, Dick, those are just feelings. <laughs> Medicate them. <laughs> Hands me a bottle, 150 proof Jamaican rum. He doesn't know I'm an alcoholic waiting to happen. <laughs> He doesn't understand that nine generations, nobody in my family has ever used the word sip. <laughs> Even my grandmother goes, give me a belt of that shit. It's a grand, that's Quentin, Chris, Nitro. Drank a lot, drank a lot. And the car that I went to the dance in, that was a classic. It was my first new car, actually it was a used car. I think the technical expression is shitbox. <laughs> This was a beauty, 59 Ford Fairlane 500, whip antenna with a raccoon tail, pom-pom balls around the window in case you want to drive through Lowell. <laughs> the state park. Honey, get the kids, we're going camping in Lowell. <laughs> Cooking hot dogs on the banks of the Merrimack River. <laughs> Throw a match in, it explodes. <laughs> Destroys Lowell, within 15 or 20 years, somebody would care. They'd be from Lawrence going, we're number one now, man. <laughs> Somebody from Chelsea going, we're number two. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe this one either. This is truth night here. Fool's night. This is a shocker. I used to get rejected. I know what you're saying. How can anybody reject a guy like that? I got rejected because of my ethnic background. I'm half Irish and half Italian. So I get really shit-faced and I steal from myself. It's horrible. One time I was really drunk, I said, you can't have my money, I had to shoot myself in the foot. Family days, I didn't know whether to eat too much or beat up a relative. My mother's the Italian. My, my father took her prisoner during World War II. <laughs> he was stationed over in Revere. <laughs> Italian mothers are the greatest women in the world. But they have two small problems. A little mustache. <laughs> and the house coat. Everybody buys my mother a house coat. They're in the draw with the ticket still on. 
She won't wear them. She's got this rag that matches her fuzzy slippers. Hairs and rollers. Don't you think my choppers? And they want to feed the world. If you're under 5,000 pounds, my mother thinks you're starving. All the time, Richard, did you eat? I ate, 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 did you eat? I said, Mar, it's four in the morning. She said, yes, but did you eat? She lives in the fear it's going to come on the evening news. Local entertainer Dick Dard, he was found dead today. Autopsy reveals his stomach was empty. His mother is being sought for questioning. Behind every picture frame in my home, brown, dry, dead palms. From 1942. And 111 crucifixes, seven of which glow in the dark. She won them at the Brockton Fair. Out in the backyard, flamingos like this. And apparently, in Italy, there are no gray rocks. Because the first thing they do when they get off the boat is start painting rocks white. Then they line everything that isn't moving with white rocks. Walks, rocks, knock off your socks. And the walks go past the mulch pile where the house goat should be buried. Past the little pedestal with the big silver ball. Come on, nobody's ever met an Italian that didn't have big balls and think they belonged on a pedestal. <laughs> to the corner of the yard where they have the Italian tree stump. Now you might say, why do they call it the Italian tree stump? Or maybe you won't. They call it the Italian tree stump because the Greeks, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, the people who sweat when they're not even working. <laughs> they will dig the tree stump, clear the land flat, put in gorgeous lawns. The Irish leave the tree, put up a hammock, get shit-faced. <laughs> the Italians cut the tree off at this height, painted red, white, and green, put aluminum foil with pansies on top. Then down in the corner of the yard, larger white rocks surrounded by more pansies. With a bathtub cut in half, painted baby blue. With your second statue of Madonna and flashing Christmas tree lights. Mary on the half shell. And in Mia Bacchiata, I like to use the native tongue. In Mia backyard, and if you are Italian, there'll be some crying right now. A zucchini shaped swimming pool. Coma, 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 bella. Which is a waste of money because Italian mothers will never swim in swimming pools. It is written in the catechism. Thou shalt swim at Revere Beach. So they come from all over New England, the roly poly women on the march. Wearing house coats with pieces of garlic hanging on. <laughs> hanging on the back of Pushkot singing Malafema. Telling strange kids, manja, manja. Telling little old men, Ajuda. And they line up in four inches of water wearing one piece black v neck bathing With a little skirt. And then all day long. <laughs> daughters, the little Fluzanos. You know the ones with the big tall hair and that special makeup that only young Italian girls can wear. Joe's Auto Body Trucking, Towing and Rouge Company. Fifteen pieces of gold jewelry, real gold, 18 carat worth over 70 bucks. Black fishnet bathing suit, cut way up high. French cut. Like they're gonna get a chance to sleep with Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> you know, so you have to give you a bump to bump in Eclipso. <laughs> and the finishing touches for a day at the beach to complete the Italian ensemble. White high heel spike shoes. Perfect for chasing chimeras. <laughs> or if you're in front of Kelly's catching that clam roll, and that float by. And I'd like to be serious before I go off, ladies and gentlemen. Close by just mentioning that. 
You know, I just recently got remarried after almost 19 years of being very, very happy. <laughs> and you know, it's, this time it's, it's a lot different. This time, I'm a more mature person. I've learned how that a woman wants to communicate. And I've learned how to speak a language that a woman can understand. And I think you guys could learn from this. I've learned how to say things that my wife appreciates, like, yes, dear. <laughs> Absolutely, sweetheart. <laughs> Hey, thanks for pointing that out to me. Why didn't I listen to you in the first place? Right again. Hey, thank you for saving me from myself. Thank you all very, very much.